Hello and welcome. My name is Hazi Irons. I'm your host. We have Aubrey B. and Gary K. here from the women's soccer team. How are you guys doing today? Great. Good, good thank, you. thank you. Pretty good. Nice little time off, you know, before your games. Well, it's never time off. You're always uh, watching game film or you're getting prepared for putting together a game plan or something. So it's never really a time off. But yeah, you would know. This is your <laughs> 24th season with the girls. How do you feel? Old. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no actually, um, I, 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 you know, it's, it's, a, it's an exciting season and uh, every year is something new and it's a different challenge. But uh, it's, you know, at least it's going well and, mm -hmm. you know, the, I'm always excited when we're doing well. Exactly. So you said there is different challenges each season. What makes this season so distinct from the rest of your 23-year career? Well, um, you know, it's just a different group of kids, and every year you, the team dynamics change, team chemistry changes, uh, implementing game plans that are um, depending on the strength of your team and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And then, of course, trying to get the right people to play in the right times, doing the right games. And so you're hoping all the time that, that there's a whole bunch of stuff like um, soccer isn't like football or basketball where they have stopping and then you make changes to personnel and it just goes on the fly and sometimes the changes have to happen really quick mm -hmm. and so the kids have to understand the changes and the formations and the tactics that we're doing on the fly and uh, I think our kids are well enough trained and they, they're smart enough that they are able to do that mm -hmm. uh, during games. Yeah. Well, considering, guys, considering you guys are 9-3, to three, um, what are the strengths that help you get to that record? To be honest, I think it's just the kids. They 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 really um, gelled well. They uh, they 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 play to the game plan and they um, they play for each other. And I think, you know, at this point, it's um, it's it's a lot of hard work. And and um, you know, the success comes, I think, through hard work. Mm -hmm. And your team dynamic. Do you have a lot of seniors and freshmen coming on the team, or is it like a mix of juniors? And so um, on? Well, last year we had 19 freshmen and sophomores, and we mm -hmm. brought on about 10 more. But we actually have um, three seniors, three seniors, and they are all terrific leaders. Nice. And so I think you need that leadership. Last year we only had one senior, mm -hmm. and so um, you know we don't have that leadership, but this year we do. Yeah, and seniors, you're graduating in December. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Thank you. You've been on the team for four years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and since you've been here as a player's perspective, how has the dynamic changed? How have you grown, and what have you seen switch up? Well, I would say this year, even just comparing it to last year, um, our team has matured a lot. Mm -hmm. Like Gary said, we brought in a lot of younger girls last year, so it was kind of a rebuilding year. Yeah. And a year uh, to step up and you know change culture if it is you know a little bit shaky. Yeah, sure. So um, yeah, so like this year we have a lot more upperclassmen, and like Gary mentioned, more leadership from coming from the upperclassmen. So. Um, and I would say this year we're playing more as a unit, as a team, rather mm -hmm. than individuals. And like Gary said as well, I agree with that we just gelled so well this year. Mm -hmm. And just our team chemistry is stronger than ever. Yeah, I bet that's a huge con you know, contribution to um, the way you do on the field, your chemistry. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so it's good relationship chem chemistry and good um, you know, tactical chemistry? Yes. Well, uh, yeah, and, and, and again, when we, when we chain, make these changes on the fly, sometimes we'll go with... Uh, you know, four at the back, sometimes we'll go with three at the back, sometimes mm -hmm. we'll attack with three forwards, sometimes when we need a goal we might even go with four forwards, so all that stuff happens on the fly and if the kids don't understand what we're doing then we, we, we're in a lot of trouble. But uh, thank heavens that last year uh, we went through most of the, uh, through all these changes last year and so this year it's kind of old hat to them, they've, they've done it before so they know what they're doing as soon as we make these changes. So, mm -hmm. And then they help the freshmen that have come in that didn't know anything. Yeah. I, I keep saying that the, the biggest reason why we're successful I think is because our seniors have led by example. And have yeah, been and kind of molded the right. freshman and, and, class. And being, whereas last year they didn't have that role. They may have been captain but they just weren't in the same capacity. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It was just different. Yeah, growth, up and up always. Right. Yeah. So let's talk about the match with Slip. We know that was pretty <coughs> exciting. Yeah. Yeah, you want to go with that? Super exciting. Yeah, <laughs> actually, we were just talking about that before we started. Um, we're going to come up with another game against them this Saturday, so we're going to probably be neck and neck as mm -hmm. we're fighting for the first place in our conference. Mm -hmm. But um, that game was super exciting. You um, and Slip neck and neck for first place in the conference? Right. And when, when is this game, just so viewers know? Saturday at 1 at, at, at Slippy Rock. Mm -hmm. Slippy Rock, all right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we play at home and away mm -hmm. on all the teams in the West, and um, so we play them at home, obviously we beat them, now it's away, and um, you know, it, it, 
it doesn't really matter because uh, we're hoping to make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you want to win the West. Um, but the, the ultimate goal is to make the playoffs. And once you're in the playoffs, then anything can happen after that. So mm -hmm. that's kind of the plan. And yeah. Slippery Rock just happens to be... Gannon comes first on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Gannon is a first fight. That, that, is, a, yeah, that is a tough game. Yeah, that, that's exciting. It's going to be a good game for you guys. So as a coach, do you still get nervous before the games? Like, how, like I know the, the girls get you know, nervous, <laughs> but you... 23 years later, what's going on in your head? I think it's worse. Mm. I think it's worse when you coach. It's worse mm. because you can't play, you don't warm up, mm. you don't kick anybody, you don't fight anybody. You kind of <laughs> just have to sit there and try and be more cerebral and mm. physical. And uh, it, it's, it's harder, I think, being a coach. I'm emotionally drained. I'm physic uh, you know, mentally drained after mm. games. They, 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 it's tough. Yeah. You know, it's, I, I used to be physically drained, but that's okay because you, at least you feel like you've done something. Yeah. You know? So I know my kids play hard. I know they play really hard. And, Mm. Or we can, you know, say something more on that. Yeah. We'll get you fired up before the games. It's just playing. You know, mm. it's just playing. Whoever the next opponent is, it doesn't matter who you're playing. You mm. just, it's just who you're playing. The national anthem sounds, seems like it takes an hour. Yeah, That's just like three the minutes. nerves and like, <laughs> let's get to it. Type of I, I just want to play, man. I can't, <laughs> can't we just get the game going, you know? It's mm. kind of one of those gigs, but. Yeah. yeah. And you as a player, like, what gets the girls fired up in the locker room? What are you guys saying? What are your rituals? Um, well, we're always jamming out to music. Everyone's dancing always. Mm -hmm. But then when Gary comes in with the game plan, we kind of get ready in game mode, start to get serious and focus. Mm -hmm. And definitely just in the warm up, I think um, this year um, our warm up has been really good every before every game mostly. Mm -hmm. um, I think, like we mentioned before, we're all just gelled in and focused on winning, and like this winning momentum just is continuing. So I mm -hmm. think we're always prepared to as Gary would say, fist fight for the next win, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. So, any preparation that you do, how do you balance your schoolwork uh, versus being, you know, a senior on the soccer team and a role model to the younger girls? Um, well, I've always liked to be busy. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I'm a dual major and also with playing on the soccer team is a lot, and I, I know a lot of the girls are on our team are like science majors or business or nursing, so obviously difficult majors that acquire a lot of time. Mm -hmm. But um, I find it for myself, the busier I am, the more productive I become. Yeah. So even with schoolwork, um, because we are traveling tomorrow to Gannon, we only have, we have this much time on the bus, maybe that time can go towards studying or, mm -hmm. so it's just all about time management and learning that. I mean, as upperclassmen, we help the younger girls, especially the freshmen. Um, learn how to manage better, yeah. whether it's in study tables or just like personal help, like one on one. All right. So you guys have a few games left of the season. Are you excited to, you know, bow out gracefully and then move on to your career? And what's going through your head, you know, as a senior? Um, yeah, it's definitely bittersweet. Um, it's super exciting knowing the position that we're in, mm -hmm. and we're guaranteed more games later in the playoffs. Hopefully, knock on wood. But. Mm -hmm. <laughs> knock on wood. So, right. So, that's super exciting <laughs> knowing that it's also my senior year that we made it this far. So, that's awesome. But, yeah, I'm definitely excited to graduate and then um, see better and see different things, I mm -hmm. guess. Yeah. Aubrey's already got a job. She's already got a job when she graduates. <laughs> oh. and, uh, team GPA is, I think, 359. Oh, that, oh that's you guys. pretty good, yeah. So, so, academically, the kids do well. And then, aesthetically, and, and we all understand that at the end of the day, Soccer is sport, but um, they're going to graduate and become hopefully successful in their personal lives mm -hmm. working somewhere else. Yeah. So that's really the goal. On that same note, what are you most proud of or, or your top, however many you want to list, of this team? Well, you, you know, the, uh, even last year, and, and, and the majority of this team was there last year, uh, the team chemistry is something that um, is, is very difficult. Even when you're winning, it's difficult, right? Mm -hmm. Well, last year we were 6-11 and 11 and we had incredible team chemistry. And, and I think that's carried over to this year. And the kids are just nice kids. They, they, they're great kids. I mean, I, uh, I can't tell you enough how awesome the kids are. And that the results are great, mm -hmm. but um, at the end of the day, you know, I, I think success is defined any way you want to look at it. I mean, winning is, is important, but um, I think friendships for life matter more. I know mm -hmm. it sounds stupid, I know it's corny, but at the end of the day, I think that, that's, you know, that's where we funded, and that's, that's really the goal. And, and, and I think my kids 
hopefully will come back here and feel welcome at any time in their life. That, that's, that's really the plan. You know, complete the circle, go off, come back, you know, right. spread cheer. Just be, understand that they, they, will, they belong here. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is home. All right. This is home with Aubrey B. and Gary K. from the women's soccer team. Catch them. Your next game is? Wednesday, tomorrow. Wednesday, tomorrow at Gannon. So we're going to begin. I can predict the future. <laughs> they already lost, and we won. Yay, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Thank That'll you, guys. We'll be back with the rest of the Fighting Scott Show. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome. My name is Hazi Irons, and I'm here today with Clayton Foster and Miss Stephanie Parsons from the women's cross-country team. So, lady and gentlemen, how are you feeling about this season so far? You go first. Um, so far, we've been off to a really good start. We've mm -hmm. uh, trained really hard, and um, we've had, like, one good race where we got ready and ran really fast, and then la just last week, we went to the PSAC championship, mm -hmm. and... Um, yeah, we all ran really hard and came away with a win. Yeah. So how was uh, preparing for the PSAC championships where you guys all brought home a win? Um, yeah, we, uh, we didn't back off too much. We trained hard like in the weeks before the PSAC championship, but uh, we still showed up ready to run hard. Mm -hmm. yeah. And mm -hmm. what are you guys' trainings like to get you prepared for that level of competition and succeeding, obviously? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, every every coach has their own different philosophy. Mm -hmm. uh, it depends on what your team's goal is for the season. And our goal is to start inching our way up the national meet. Mm -hmm. um, and so conference, we didn't put too much emphasis on this year. We really trained pretty hard through it um, and just kind of challenged the team to work together when it came race day. And mm -hmm. they performed really well. Uh, on the women's side, we had... Um, our girls went first, second, fifth, and tenth, mm -hmm. and um, our fifth girl was 42nd. And so um, the girls had a, had a wonderful race. They, they competed hard together. And mm -hmm. so uh, moving forward, we're, we're trying to really uh, bring it in these next two meets. Yeah. So being that cross country is a really individualistic sport, everyone gets their own time, how do you guys keep that team effort going, even though it is super solo at the end of the day? Um, I think it's all about like working towards a common goal. Mm -hmm. We all want to um, get to the national meet. That's all of our ultimate goals. And mm -hmm. by each performing our best individually, that's how mm -hmm. we come together and do that. Represent that red and white. That's mm -hmm. right. Regardless. So, yeah. yeah. And as a coach, um, before Edinburgh, where were you? Uh, my previous five years, I spent um, at Adams State University, mm -hmm. and there I was the assistant coach under Damon Martin. And then my undergrad, I was at Minnesota State University, Moorhead. Mm -hmm. and that's where I competed uh, their Division II as well. I ran middle distance and then cross country as well. So. Mm -hmm. so you have a lot of Midwestern, West Coast experience. Do you see any change in dynamic with the East Coast runners and maybe the altitude change? Um, absolutely. Uh, altitude is a huge factor. Um, I mean, when you train at 7,500 feet, you, your, body, your body changes physiologically, and um, it really helps endurance athletes. Um, as far as climate difference, mm -hmm. I mean, when I, in my undergrad in Minnesota, it was cold up north. Yeah. And so I think that's similar to here as far as it is cold. Uh, it's not as cold, but you, you endure the winter elements, and so you get a lot of snow, and um, it kind of affects training during the winter months. Mm -hmm. And so um, there's just little things like that that you have to kind of work around that yeah. you can't control. How much of an impact does the weather uh, change on you guys? Because I know you guys go down south sometimes for meets. So coming from, what, like zero degrees to like maybe 72, is your body like exhausted? afterwards or does it make a huge impact? I Yeah, definitely going to different temperatures, you're going to like react differently. So mm -hmm. you have to um, basically prepare for what you're going to be racing in because that's when you want to perform. Mm -hmm. um, last year I went down to Texas where it was like 95 degrees and like a lot of humidity. So in the weeks like leading up to that, I dressed in like so many layers and would basically did like heat acclimation mm -hmm. for like three weeks just to get ready to run down there. Yeah, it's crazy physical, mental, 
beating mm -hmm. before a match. Yeah, I think definitely the weather has a huge like mental aspect. You mm -hmm. just have to like try to like control what you can control basically. Yeah. What mm -hmm. do you prefer? Like your best time. Let's get to that. What's your personal best time? Um for what you've had. Yeah, yeah we run like a lot of <laughs> events. <laughs> um uh, go through your PRs. Yeah, do that. Okay. Um for the mile it's four forty eight and then four twenty five in the fifteen hundred. Um, then in the 5K, I've ran 1705, mm -hmm. and then in the 6K, I've ran 2120. Yeah. So we talked about team dynamics before the show. How much of the um, team environment affects how you run and the positive aspects of that? I think the team uh, dynamic definitely has like everything to do with how you run. Like this past Friday, when we showed up to the start line and we're like, we warm up for like about a 20 minute jog before the race. Mm. Um, we were like all laughing and it was very like relaxed. Like even though like it was a big meet, we were all like very relaxed and knew what we had to do and just mm. like talking. And I think being in a good, everyone being in a relaxed and good mood definitely uh, helped us all perform at our best once yeah. the race started. A little calm before the storm, giggly, you know, getting <laughs> yeah. the nerves off yeah. and then like kick butt, you know, when that, sound goes off. Oh, yeah. So as a coach, how do you keep your spirits up? What gets you riled up before me? <laughs> I'm always riled up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I've always got energy and the kids sometimes that are 6, 6.30 a.m. practices, I'll come in and I'll be like clapping and be like, it's a great day and it could be raining. Like, yeah, yeah, and yeah, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I try to just always bring a positive and high energy environment mm -hmm. because sometimes they're not and so usually I try to have them meet me at least halfway mm -hmm. um, but in race race days uh, more so I try to keep everyone calm and just calm and collected every person is so different and individualized some mm -hmm. people like to be excited and all like hyped up mm -hmm. where some kids need to calm down significantly and yeah, so to just top notch. yeah just yeah. really having an eye and watching each person individually as they're warming up and seeing if they need any um, last minute attention. All right, well, thank you for having, well, thank you for joining us on the Fighting Scott Sports Show. We have uh, Stephanie Peer Parsons and Clayton Foster with us from the women's cross country team. Stay tuned for the next segment. Welcome back. My name is Hazi Irons, and we are joined today with Clayton Foster and sophomore Ward Reese. What's going on? How's life? It's pretty great. Glad mm -hmm. to be here. Glad to be here from your PSAC championship. How did that go? Well, I mean, you can see it for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Got to represent. Okay, yeah. I understand. How'd that go for you? Um, well, individually, I was fifth, which uh, was pretty exciting. Um, I went into the race with a top five goal in mind. Mm -hmm. uh, our team got it done, which I was pleased with. Mm -hmm. uh, there's always room for improvement, but we won, so. Congrats, good for you, good for you. Thank you. Big up, gentlemen, nice. So you're on the team for two years, yes? Yeah. Okay, and last year, how'd you do? Uh, last year at the PSAC Championship, I was sixth, mm -hmm. which uh, felt like a pretty big exciting thing mm -hmm. uh, being a freshman mm -hmm. um, but yeah I guess I've made a one place improvement yeah for yet. sure you know always up and up like we say we, we don't sink here right. we, we reese oh I mean rise sorry um, as a coach how do you feel about the gentleman's team this year versus last year and you can touch on this too after he's done mm -hmm. uh, this year or last year I, I redshirted a lot of my freshman boys and uh, I just felt they needed some time to improve and just become a little more fit overall. Um, and this year, I mean, they're all racing now. And so we have a really, really deep group of guys. Um, and I think it's been extremely beneficial to pushing each of them individually in practice sessions. And then each race, they're trying to like beat each other as much as be on the same team and do it for each other. They're like, it's a battle too at the end of the day. And so um, I think it's just uh, our men's team is, has a really solid group and a really solid pack and we're still trying to perfect that for championship season. Yeah, uh, speaking of pack, is it exciting letting all, 
all, all the young guys, you know, out of the cage and they can run now? Or is it kind of like, because uh, it's, you know, all so sudden and so quick? <laughs> I think it's exciting because uh, I tell them, whether you're a freshman or a senior, you better come out with some serious competitive nature, you know. Mm -hmm. And so in the sport of running, you can be a great runner no matter how old you are or what year you are. It's just how tough are you and can you endure for 25, 35 minutes of time. And so um, I love it. I was excited. Yeah. And you, as you were registered last year? Um, I registered for like the first half, so not really. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I didn't redshirt last year. Yeah. So what was the difference between redshirting versus now being, you know, full shirt, I guess? Um, it's really exciting to, to be officially on a team all year. Uh, last year I only raced the postseason, so going into the postseason this year with a couple of races under my belt already for the team, um, I know more of my place on the team and how I need to perform in order for all of us to succeed. For sure, and I'm sure it seems like the leadership on the team is pretty solid given that you wouldn't let your boys out if you didn't see that they were fit. How do you feel about, you know, the team dynamic? What gets you guys pumped up before a match? Uh, well, <laughs> our, our pump up definitely comes from uh, our, our coaching staff mm -hmm. uh, and a couple of the upperclassmen on the team. Uh, we're always circled up out there in the field before the gun goes off mm -hmm. and get, get a couple quick hype up words. And, uh, but what goes beyond the, the coach pump up, I think, is our, is our brotherhood and how we all want to race for each other. And even though we're racing against each other sometimes, like he said, um, at the end of the day, we're, we're putting it all out there just to help our brothers out. Mm -hmm. So personally, and you can you know, run down the list, what are your personal best times? And how did you prepare prepare for those? Uh, well, for cross country, my fastest 8K is a 25.37, uh, which I think I can definitely improve upon. Um, I don't know. I guess you prepare for all of it the same, which is just running. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's all it is. Uh, and your improvements, like what do you do that kicks you up a notch? Or what can you improve on that gets you there? Personally, I just trust in the training. Mm -hmm. I know that he's going to put the workouts out there and increase my volume when it needs to be mm -hmm. and decrease my mileage when I don't need it as much. Uh, so I'm kind of just doing whatever what he says with mm -hmm. my own personal goals in mind. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. And as a coach, uh, how do you feel about the male dynamic, you know, um, the older stats, sorry, the older players and the younger players, how does that play in and how do you fit in to the group of boys that are looking up to you? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, right now we're cumulatively a really young team. Uh, we have two juniors on the team. Otherwise, the rest of them, which is another 17, are mm -hmm. redshirt sophomores, mm -hmm. redshirt freshmen, or freshmen. And they're literally and coming so, out, you know, yeah. the pack soon. Good for yeah. you guys. And so very, very young group. Um, I think the dynamic is awesome. They, they, they bring a lot of energy. They're, they're constantly... <laughs> talking like all the time I have to ask them to you know <laughs> yeah they, they need to quiet down every now and then uh, but you know I, I think the men's dynamic is awesome yeah. it's awesome considering, considering they're all so young they're going to grow together and they're going to be a huge force as seniors and then the younger kids coming in looking at these mm -hmm. 17 uh, established you know already set guys that's you know you're growing a team pretty much so mm -hmm. your garden's pretty young, but good for you. Yeah. Good for you. So thank you for joining us at the Fighting Scots Sports Show. We had Coach Clayton Foster and Ward Rees. Thank you for joining us. Before closing out the show, we would like to say congratulations to the Scots Athletes of the Week. First is Danielle Chatton. Second is Tanaz Gregory. Thank you for joining us on this week's show. Please be sure to stay up to date with all things Borough by visiting www.edinburghnow.com and checking out the Twitter and Instagram at Edinburgh Now. We'll see you soon. Have a good weekend. Go Borough!